Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be taking a look at Sentinel-1, another next-gen AI-based security solution for endpoints. And as you can see, they have invested heavily on their website. It's actually one of the fastest growing companies in Silicon Valley. They've pretty much got all aspects of endpoint protection. We've got detection and response, IoT discovery and control, cloud security. And I've also been told that they've got a really high warranty policy. They've even got a live demo here following the execution chain of a certain file. But enough of the website, let's take a look at the actual product. So as you can tell, it's very simple on the client side. Obviously, there are more settings on the actual cloud interface, but this is all you get. You've got processes, applications, and services. This is what you see on the system. These are the actual settings that it's configured to. So as you can see, it's set to protect, kill, and quarantine any threats or suspicious files. And it's also using all of the engines. It's using the reputation engine, documents, scripts, anti-exploit, UPs, all of that stuff. And we've got intrusion detection as well. As always, we will be testing this against over 1500 malware samples all collected within the last few hours, and we'll see how it holds up. Now, normally what I do is I grab a folder onto the desktop and then I execute it with the help of a script. Now we're gonna do something slightly different here. So we're actually going to execute everything off of a network drive. So as you can see, we've got 1578 items here. This includes Trojans, ransomware, PUPs. And now we're going to use a script to automate going through each of those files, launching them on the system with a delay, kind of similar to what would happen if you had a compromised system or remote code execution vulnerability. Another great example of an attack vector using the network drive could be, you know, you've had one of those oopsies, some employee has messed up a password and you've got a compromised account and then the attacker is trying to infect systems on your network using that. Not an uncommon scenario. So now I'm going to start Task Manager. We'll monitor the CPU usage, see how Sentinel-1 responds, get rid of Microsoft Edge because we don't need the fancy website anymore taking up our CPU. Now let's move over to our network drive and execute our script. Everything looks ready and good to go, so let's get testing. As you can see, immediately we've got Sentinel-1 claiming that threats have been detected. The UI does seem to be suffering from some visual glitches. I don't know if that is just because this is a VM and it has a different display driver or if the UI just glitches in general. In terms of protection, it seems to be doing quite well. So it's detected everything so far and we're 5% through. It's also going really fast, so that's good to see. Now we'll speed it up and uh, see what we end up with. Now the CPU usage is actually quite reasonable and the test is progressing really fast. So in terms of performance, I think this is one of the better results I've seen in recent times. Okay, this is interesting. So it looks like it actually terminated the Python script that was spawning these processes. It's probably following the execution chain and it realized, okay, this particular script is launching a ton of malware. Let's just terminate it. However, we'll try something else. What we're gonna do now is I will just grab the malware onto the desktop. So we'll go into our shared folder, just try and copy this folder over. And I think it should detect these files as they're being transferred. As you can see, there are a ton of detections. Now we'll let this complete. So we're gonna grab all the files that are not directly detected, or at least not during modification. And then we'll try and execute the files on the desktop, which are probably the files that it doesn't have signatures for, that it doesn't detect, at least not until execution. And then we'll go ahead and use the script to run the remainder. So if we take a look at the folder right now, as you can see, things are rapidly being removed. The number of items is going down. So we've got 1200 at the moment, started out at over 1500. We'll see where this finally ends up, and then we'll go ahead and execute everything in here. All right, so it seems like Sentinel-1 has finished processing and we've got 89 items left over. So these are all files that it's not removing by default. Now let's go ahead and execute these and see what happens to the system. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Malix again. Real-time protection is of course enabled. 
Now this is really interesting. It seems like it was blocking quite a few of these and then it did miss a couple and once again Malik seems to be terminated after a few files were blocked. Once it figures out that malicious processes are being launched using this attack vector it just cuts off the attack vector. Now the interesting thing is it does block these files. These were not blocked when I was trying to copy them over but a lot of these were actually blocked on execution. I'll go ahead and try executing these one more time. Let's see what happens. And unsurprisingly, it's terminated. Now, I did notice some misses on the screen, so I guess some files did actually execute. Whether or not they were blocked once in memory, I'm not sure. So now we'll go ahead and reboot the system, get rid of temp files, and then we'll try and figure out if we've got any active threats. Okay, so I was trying to do some second opinion scans on this system, and it actually terminated Hitman Pro, funnily enough. I'm not sure why. Norton Power Racer didn't find anything and wasn't terminated, thankfully. But as you can see, it considers Hitman Pro .exe as malicious activity. So again, I think it depends heavily on how this product is configured. At the moment, it seems extremely aggressive. Let's see what happens when we try running some legitimate files on this system. And there you go, Process Hacker is blocked as well because it's considered malicious activity. So this is obviously an extremely aggressive configuration, aggressive to the point where if you wanted to use the system and install programs on it, you probably couldn't. And that's something that's really important to keep in mind when evaluating solutions. It's very easy to build a solution that'll block almost anything, but that's not the point. The real challenge is how do you detect malware without detecting anything else? And I think now, of course, you can potentially argue that you don't need to run a lot of programs in an endpoint environment. Maybe you just want the system to retain its configurations. Who needs to run Process Hacker anyway? But my point is, if you just wanted to do that, this is an over-engineered solution. You could build a tool for much cheaper that would just restrict access and prevent programs from being started. Now you don't need a next-gen AV vendor to accomplish that, and you definitely don't need to be paying for it yearly. So in my opinion, high false positives are a problem. Now, as you can see, again, we try another legitimate program and it's blocked as well. While it might seem impressive at first glance when you're watching all that malware being blocked, thinking, wow, this is great. The problem is, as you can see, it's not just the malware being blocked. I'm sure there's more to explore when it comes to products like Sentinel-1. I think it'd be interesting to see how this reacts at different settings. Now, based on the configuration we tested, it blocks just about everything. Maybe sometime in the future, I'm going to test in a more reasonable configuration um, after whitelisting the actual script that I'm using for execution. And I think that's going to tell us a lot more about the real protection effectiveness of this product, but I think I'll leave it here for now. Also, it's just funny to see the UI glitches. Ooh, look at that, we've got transparent UI. I know it's not very conclusive, but that's partly because I do not have full access to the configuration on the Sentinel-1 client, so I have to run with the settings that it's got. But hey, at least it was fun, right? So please like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This is Leo, thank you so much for watching, and as always, Stay informed, stay secure.